Join us for a special edition of the CBS Evening News from New Hampshire, where independent voters could play a big role in who wins the GOP. from New York City. It's just about 9 a.m. on the East Coast, 6 a.m. out West. I'm Vladimir Dutia in Times Square. And I'm Anne-Marie Green in Studio 57. And here's a look at the stories grabbing our attention right now. It's officially a two-person race for the Republican presidential nomination. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is bowing out ahead of New Hampshire's first-in-the-nation primary. A deadly Arctic weather system still grips much of the country, but some areas will see a warm-up this week, bringing rain and a chance of flooding with it. Israel rejects a proposal from Hamas to withdraw from Gaza and end the war in exchange for the release of hostages. We're in the Middle East with the escalating tensions. A baby clothes company is facing major backlash this morning. An employee's family says she was forced to quit because Kite Baby would not let her work remotely while her newborn baby was in intensive care. The multiple apologies from the CEO and the action the company is taking now. You know, Amory, I sh I'm sure you saw this sort of blow up over the weekend. Um, it, 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 it's a fascinating story, and there's a lot to get into. But one of the things that I pointed out here at CBS Mornings is that, to me, the larger takeaway from this is how there are still in this country, unlike many other countries um, in, in developed nations, there are still no protections for parents who, uh, um, who need to work from home when they're faced with a, a paternity or maternity crisis. Um, and, and that's the problem. There are no protections that we don't have protections for moms and dads who face a crisis like this, um, or even if they're not facing a crisis, just to raise a child in the first couple of weeks after they're born. Yeah, and I think sort of beyond protections, there needs to be supports that are not sort of dependent strictly on the companies to finance these sort of things, right? That that really it's something that you that other in other countries, the federal government might step in to help. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of kind of there are points on sort of both sides with this story. But I'm really looking forward to talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this morning, we're going to begin with the shakeup in the 2024 election just before the New Hampshire primary. By now, you've heard Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is out and he's endorsed former President Donald Trump. And now it's officially a two person race to become the Republican presidential nominee. A new Emerson College WHDH poll shows Trump with a large advantage in New Hampshire with just over half of the projected Republican vote. Nikki Haley is at just 35 percent, but Apparently, there is still a potential path to her victory. All right, so Caitlin Huey Burns is going to kick things off for us. She's got uh, the beginning of our team coverage from Manchester, where she's following the candidates' final pushes. Hello, Caitlin. Hey, good morning. Well, with just one day to go, this race is a fish officially down to just former President Donald Trump and his former UN ambassador, Nikki Haley. And while it's cold outside, the heat is definitely turned up in this race over the weekend. They were going after each other ramping up those attacks and knowing that this second nominating contest could possibly be, for all intents and purposes, the very last. Can you 